Give him 20 cc's of epinephrine. Which is too very much as minimal. He may have internal injuries. Did anyone palpate his abdomen? Careful! Spleen could be ruptured. Right over here. Can you the Doesn't look so good. Does he die? He's not gonna make it if we don't get him stabilized quickly. Isn't that Elliot Ness? You're all right. I don't feel all right. You need to rest now. Everything's gonna be fine. Don't worry. Dr. Purcell. Yes, I see. Mr. Ness. I'm Dr. Purcell. Oh, you had us a little worried there. I've, I've got to get up. I've got to... I'll, uh, I'll handle it from here, nurse. Yes, doctor. What day is it? It's Wednesday. I've uh, been saving this headline for you. I've had our staff read to you every night since you came to us. How long has it been? Some of my colleagues didn't think that you were ever going to wake up, but I was sure that you would. I've got to see a patient in the recovery room, but I'll be back in a while. It's good to have you back with us. attorney's office in Chicago. From E.Q. Johnson, my boss. He's coming to see me next week. Why haven't I heard from Catherine? Sit, please. You've been in a coma. There was a car accident. Fortunately for you, the accident occurred about two miles from the clinic. It's a miracle that you survived in one piece. How long was I out? A long time.
This thing is dated May of next year. The accident occurred about 10 months ago. 10 months? My family. I need to see Catherine. She's looking forward to seeing you too. She'll be here soon. Well, you have a lot of friends who care about you a great deal. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Ness. Mr. Capone is really in jail. <laughs> We've got a lot of catching up to do. My men. What about my man, Mike Malone? He's kept in touch with us. He's gone to Boston to be near his family. I'm sure he'll want to talk to you. But let's not rush things. Your nervous system has gone through a tremendous shock. We'll talk more this evening, after dinner. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, aren't you, uh... Elliot Ness? Oh, Jesus. I, I used to read about you all the time, Mr. Ness. You and those uh, uncorruptibles. <laughs> Untouchables. Yeah. Uh, my name's uh, Hatcher. I was a cop in St. Louis. Safe, lofted truck squad. I took a bullet right here. <laughs> oh, nothing like the kind of stuff you were involved in, of course, but uh, we did our share of damage. You ever hear the McPherson case? No, I I'm sorry. I've, I've got a lot on my mind. Hey, you know, I followed that tax case you built against Capone every step of the way. You were absolutely brilliant. Never, Capone never saw it coming. I had a lot of help. Oh, yeah. But you were calling the shots. Without you, Capone and his empire would still be intact. Well, what's the matter? You should feel terrific. You're part of U.S. history now. Yeah, if you say so. I, I don't know who deserves the credit. I wasn't even there. Doc, will I see Catherine this weekend? We're going to be running a few tests over the next week or so. We just want to make sure there was no residual Doctor, nerve damage. I asked you a specific question about my wife. She and your daughter were in the car with you. What, what are you talking about? This afternoon, you told me they were... The doctors coming. in the emergency room did everything they could. Catherine and your daughter didn't make it, Elliot. Well, no. No. I'm very, very sorry. No. They, why didn't you tell me? I had to make sure that she was strong enough. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Plan's working. He's buying the whole thing. We'll have the information you need within 24 hours. No. That's not soon enough. I got a lot on the line here. You tell Purcell to make this work. We got to know where they hit Henry Breyer. Sir. Get it out of my sight. I don't want to deal with anything else today. This Henry Bryant thing is like a bad heat rash, Frank. We gotta find out where he stashed them. Gino, beat it, will you? Keep everybody out of here. Right. So what's this born head doctor yours come up with? Well, it looks like it's working. This is all bent out of shape. He doesn't know what's happening to him. Thinks a whole year's passed by. This is a crazy scheme, Frank. I mean, you gotta admit it. We're putting our entire future in the hands of some quack doctor here. Man, the guy's a specialist. He used to do this kind of stuff for the government. Spies and all that. Yeah, government, that makes me feel better. Look out. We couldn't just beat this kind of stuff out of ass. We had to try something different. I'm not so sure, Frank. So where'd you get this doctor from? Well, he had some labor problems at his clinic. Our friend Max went in and cleaned it up. We walked away with a nice towel and linen set up. It's our best shot. The doctor tricks Ness into telling us where he stashed that lowlife, Henry Breyer. We go in, we blow Breyer away, there goes the connection with our Cicero money. Yeah. Hang on. Look, I gotta tell you, Frank, this whole thing really bothers me. I mean, it's expensive, it's dangerous. All I gotta say is I better not end up in a courtroom come Monday morning. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Ness will be back from Springfield on Monday. Meanwhile, we'll keep you safe. Like it or not, Henry Pryor, you're a federal witness now. There's no more coming or going until Monday morning when we take you into court. You sure this place is safe? What's the matter? Accommodation not to your liking? I just don't want to end up in target practice for any of Capone's mugs. Ah, uh, come on, Henry. 
We wouldn't let anything happen to you. You're our favorite accountant, you know that. At least not to your head. Because inside there are all the little numbers that are going to put an end to a sizable proportion of Capone's empire. feeling today? Just thinking about Ellen, my daughter. We've got to keep her away from Ness. She's smart. And we both know she's not afraid of causing trouble. Maybe you should have fired her when she led the nurses out on strike. I better separate them. I don't know how I'm ever going to get over this. You will. You have to go through what you're feeling right now in order to get past it. Gotta square things. Gotta go back to the house. I don't know how I'm gonna face her parents. Don't rush things. You're feeling this way because your loss is so recent. Excuse me. I hate to interrupt, but Dr. Fishbein has a code blue going. He needs a hand. Mm -hmm. If you need someone to talk to. Well, she's one of the best nurses we've got. Unfortunately, there isn't enough of her to go around. I don't suppose you kept any more of these newspapers about Capone. No, there's a library in Bloomington. I'll have someone check. They keep back issues. Thanks. I'm having a hard time, Doc. I couldn't get any sleep last night. I, I just keep trying to sort things out. There's all this, all this reading to do. There's, there's so much that I've missed. There's so many pieces that don't fit. Well, don't forget, you've been traumatized. You've been in a coma. Fine, fine, but. Why don't I remember anything about the accident? I wasn't in a coma when I got into the car. Sometimes when the human mind experiences something that's so overwhelmingly painful, it will work to black out the memory of that event. It's a form of self-protection. I need you to tell me what really happened, Doc. These were taken just a few moments after your car was pulled out of the ditch. And uh, this other driver, this drunk, he was he was killed. Too. This wasn't a Capone hit. It was random and senseless. I don't remember any of this. What do you remember? <sighs> we were all in the kitchen. They were baking cookies. You did a really good job. So what do we do next? Eat them all off. <laughs> so, uh, what time is the train? 920. I gotta walk the U.S. Attorney in Springfield through a mountain of evidence on that Henry Bryan case, but uh, any luck I'll be home tomorrow night. Mm. Hi, one, Dad. Oh, of course. Let me see that car. Work of the crack. Mmm. Mmm. That's delicious. Take some lunch. All right. But hurry, hurry, hurry. Gotta get out of here. What do you want me to take you to the station? No, no, no. You've got much more important <laughs> things to do here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, sweetie. Mmm. Hold that bag. Set the feet in. Uh, eat them and I'll think about you. I distinctly remember saying to Catherine that I didn't need a ride to the train. I remember walking out to the car by myself. Doc, I remember a lot of this. You're still in a state of denial. Wouldn't have been wonderful if you had gone out to the car by yourself, if uh, you'd left your wife and daughter safe at home. But you didn't. That isn't what happened, Elliot. And eventually, you're going to have to come to terms with that fact. This is the long haul, Elliot. I told you it wasn't going to be easy.
Capone is losing his patience. We gotta get the information out of Ness before Ness wises up. Don't worry. He's still getting a healthy dose of phenobarbital. You keep him from thinking too clearly. Oh, he's still struggling. He's very intelligent. But no man can stand up to that kind of emotional stress. Life was very beautiful. I loved her so much. Catherine was like a gift. I'd look into Catherine's eyes. All I'd see was beauty, grace. That little sly smile. She always seemed to know what was really most important in life. I don't know what I'm going to do without her. So many things that we wanted to do together. Never had the time. I was always too busy. I promised her a better life, a future. I feel like I let her down. She never blamed me. <laughs> I've lost my wife. My daughter. I know what it's like to lose someone. I lost my husband three years ago. I'm sorry. I just wanted to let you know that you're not alone. You will get through this. <sighs> sure he's accepting his reality and we can press him hard. So, Mr. Ness. <laughs> Want to play a little catch? <laughs> so what are you going to do when you get out of here? Good question. You know, I really miss reading about your exploits in the paper. Maybe I'll write a book. Hey. Remember that time you drove all of Capone's trucks past the Lex right under his nose? <laughs> <laughs> Boys in the squad room really got a kick out of that one. <laughs> Look, uh, maybe another time. I'm just not in the mood. You know, I'll never forget those pictures of you guys barging into that uh, accountant's office. What was his name? Briar. Henry Briar. You are under arrest for conspiracy to defraud the United States government. Oh, Sit down, Henry. You filed a tax return for the Trivesta Corporation, which we know is a front for Capone's gambling and liquor interests in Cicero. Henry, 
that tax return was fraudulent. Therefore, we have a subpoena for all your books and all your records. I want to talk to my lawyer. Yeah, you do that. While you're at it, Henry, mention you're looking at 10 years hard time and you're going to lose your accountant's license. Won't be seeing much of them anymore, Henry. And if the revenue boys look in your personal tax return, who knows what they might find. However, Henry, you do have a choice. You can help us put Mr. Capone out of business in Cicero for keeps. You're not damn well if I talk, Capone will kill me. Oh, Henry, I'm going to look after you like a mother hen. So, what do you think happened to all of Capone's money? We know he had a lot of legitimate businesses, so I'm sure he had a couple million socked away for the day he finally gets out. Where'd they got Capone locked up, anyway? Leavenworth. Maximum security. <laughs> you know he's got to be climbing the walls. So who's running Chicago? A bunch of small timers. You know, without Capone, the rackets just ain't what they used to be. So Capone's finally finished. This is the moment I always thought I was waiting for. I don't even care. See you later. We're very pleased that you're coming along so well, but uh, as your doctor, I still have to recommend based on your present condition. I, I appreciate your concern, but my condition is going to improve a lot quicker if I can take care of a few things. Really, it's very important. Thank you. I have to get in touch with my boss. That is if I still have a job. Number, please. In Chicago, it's Hudson 326. One moment, please. Thank you. I'm sorry, that number doesn't seem to be answering. No, that, that's the main number for the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago. It, it should answer. Could you just try it again, please? Certainly. There's no answer. Must be something wrong with the line. I'm afraid our phone service out here in the outskirts isn't the greatest. We'll try again tomorrow. Thank you. I brought you your lunch. Thank you. You're looking a lot better. Aren't you hungry? No. Oh, and if I have to take another one of these pills, I'm gonna throw up. Now, what is this supposed to do? Mm. Phenobarbital. It's a sedative. Can I help you? Sorry. Wrong room. I have been feeling a little punk. I thought it was the concussion, but uh, maybe it's the pills. Maybe the side effects are getting me down. It is a big dosage. Take those, and I'll see about getting it reduced. Now you. Down the hatch. Mm. You need to get your strength back. Thanks. Purcell's right. You really are aces. <laughs> well, those weren't his exact words. Your sense of humor is returning. That's a good sign. Damn nurse. She's been spending a lot of time with Ness. She brought him lunch. It wasn't even a rotation. I'm transferring to obstetrics. She came in to me before, uh, sniffing around about his dosage. He wants it reduced. If I were you, I'd up it. The guy looks pretty clear-headed to me. No, his dosage is just fine. I need something to look forward to. I know. He's so anxious to contact people from the outside. I tell him his pal Mike Malone will be here on Monday. <laughs> and what do we tell him on Monday? If we don't get him to talk by then, it'll be too late. Good news. We just heard from your friend Mike Malone. He's on his way. He'll be here Monday night. That's great. 
think you're ready for it. We're gonna have to stroke this guy. Yeah, don't let him think too much. I'll be back from Springfield over the weekend. Hey, Elliot, take care. There's nothing Capone won't do to find the whereabouts of this guy. So, we're in good shape. <laughs> See y'all at the courthouse for bright and early Monday morning. So, so. All right. Take it easy. See you on Monday. Sorry. What is it? Nothing. Just surprised to see you. I heard you got transferred. I did. My patients shouldn't cease to exist for me just because I changed rotations, should they? No, of course not. Oh, and Max, Mrs. Bernanski missed her respiratory therapy yesterday. Don't let it happen again. Chipper today? Yeah. Getting a visitor. Guy I used to work with. Oh, let me guess. Mike Malone. Yeah. <laughs> I've read about him too. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. Man saved my life more times than I care to count. There's not too many people in this world I can say I really trust. I know what you mean. Guys in my unit, it was like us against the world. Seems like only yesterday I was. Working with my guys, totally focused on the job, and then... You see people getting hurt every day. Yeah. And you never think it's gonna happen to you. I gotta think everything out, stay one step ahead of the bad guys. <coughs> like I should be telling you, huh? <laughs> you guys must have planned that Capone takedown for months. Yeah. It's good to know that all that work wasn't in vain. How'd you get a line on Henry Breyer? <laughs> Leg work. The tough thing was keeping him in one piece. <laughs> to think we had him holed up in the warehouse district the whole time, right under Capone's nose. No kidding. <laughs> one of those old warehouses on, what, Ashland? Thought you said you were from St. Louis. I am. I got family in Chicago, though. Spent a lot of time there, you know. What do you got there? A little food for thought. Elliot. I've been looking all over for you. There's Hardy. Or is that even your real name? You're hurting me. Good. You deserve it. Why don't you scream? Maybe your so-called doctor will come running over here, feed me another dose of bowl, maybe another set. Look, I... Save it. I'm getting out of here. You're wrong about me. I'm not part of this. I'm not one of them. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I looked at your chart today. Everything clicked into place. Look at this note Purcell wrote. What's this alpha protocol? I did some research. I found out it's a psychological experiment. They used it on spies. The whole scheme is laid out. The phony accident, the drugs, the disorientation. All designed to extract information from a reluctant subject. You need a car. I can help you. Right. So how do I know you're not just stringing me along just like Teddy Ballgame in the wheelchair? You gotta huh? believe me. Do I? I know what it's like to lose someone, too. You're real Florence Nightingale. Look, I don't blame you for being suspicious. You can believe whatever you want to believe, but I'm telling you the truth. Come on. 
Ness said Briars in the warehouse district. What are you telling me? That's all he said? We pulled off a minor miracle. Ness was very resistant. Listen to me. The money I'm paying you, I want an exact address. Well, I don't know how much more I can get out of him. You're running out of time, Doc. I want results. You get whatever you can out of him in the next couple of hours. And then what? And then you put a bullet in his head. Understand me, Doctor. You make any mistakes, and I'm talking about any mistakes at all, and I'm gonna have to consider you a liability. The warehouse district. Get the boys together. I want this red found, Frank. You search the ground. We'll check his room. Come on. Where the hell is he? I'll call Tommy. I want him on the lookout for that nurse. There's Hardy. Just heading into town. Hold on, please. Code red, Tommy. Got you. We'll take a look. Search the car. Is there anything wrong? No. <laughs> Damn it! Get my car! They're going through Bloomington. We'll catch up with them there. let you off in town. You still don't trust me. Back there, I didn't have a choice. Now I do. Look, I hate Richard Purcell every bit as much as you do. He's a crook. He wouldn't pay his staff a decent wage. When we went out on strike, he brought in goons. Capone goons. Strike breaking is one of Snarky's specialties. How could I have been so stupid? It wasn't stupidity. It was sedation. There never was any accident. He must have doped you up. How? I remember I walked out of the house, I went to the car. They couldn't have stuck a needle in my arm. You don't remember anything unusual? No. No, wait a minute. There was some kind of funny smell. Trichloromethane. What? Chloroform. Faked a telegram from my boss, printed up a phony newspaper, even went so far as to short circuit a phone call. They went to an awful lot of trouble. What did they want from you? An address. And I all but gave it to them. Operator, is the call going through? Thank you. Elliot! They're coming. That's your car. Pull over. Come on. Come on. Hello? Uh. Go. Uh. There's three farmhouses they could have run to. Check them all. Hurry up!
rest up. What happens when you get back to Chicago? You don't have to tell me. Gotta bring a witness in the court. Capone wants him dead. That's why they grabbed you? What do you do? I certainly can't go back to the clinic. You have any family? You didn't get to talk to her back there, did you? Your wife? No. At least I got to hear her voice. No, she's still alive. I know it was all just a setup, but still. The thought that I'd be without her. I'm sorry. It's all right. I came to terms with Vernon's death a long time ago. No. I'm sorry that I doubted you. Schlechte Nachricht. Es ist aus der Klinik ausgebrochen. Sie suchen ihn überall. Wunderbar, Frank. Großartig. Und was ist mit Briar? Bis morgen Mittag haben wir jedes Lagerhaus in der Gegend durchsucht. We're running out of time, Frank. We'll find them. Look, I'm sick and tired of hearing that. What do I gotta do? I gotta go out in the street and look for myself? They're expecting us at the courthouse at 9.30. You've got to go over your testimony with Ness and the U.S. attorney. What's the rush? We still have an hour and a half. We'll be taking the scenic route. Unless you particularly fancy a little stroll down Michigan Avenue, just outside Capone's headquarters. Get dressed. I don't think they're going to start without me. Stop stalling. Gotta be getting close, and there's only a couple blocks left. Rocky, you and your boys, you hit Mulberry Street. You five guys, go double check the alleys, and the rest of you come with me. What's the problem? Just procedure, Henry. With any luck, we won't have to use them. All right, let's go. Take your time, Henry. Hey, hey you seen a big Irish cop around? Plain clothes. That way. Let's go.
I am nervous, Mr. Bryant. What do you think? Well, you're a married man. Twenty years. Were you uh, nervous that day when you went to get married? Of course. Well, look now, you've just about done the bravest thing a man can do. So meeting Capone in court and putting him away should be a piece of cake. It's a long story. Come on. Come on, Mr. Bryan. I'll look after you. Officers, he's all yours. Come on, boys. They've got Bryan. Come on. Gentlemen, I'll give you a statement after the hearing. Bryan's your news. Are you going to implicate Al Capone? What's with the grins? Oh, just the irony of it all. Town full of tough guys, and we're hurting him with someone who never shot a gun in his life. This is just the beginning. Capone's not going to jail. Not on this one. But if we can shoot down his Cicero operation, we are one step closer to the source. Elliot, 